Functional Neurological Disorder, or FND, is a condition characterised by the presence of neurological symptoms that are thought to result from changes in the brain network, rather than in brain structure, sometimes described as a software rather than hardware problem. The functional part of the name refers to no known disease process or structural changes causing the symptoms, but they are genuine. It is classed under the DSM-5 Somatic Symptom Disorders and was previously called Conversion Disorder. It features neurological deficits such as weakness or paralysis, sensory loss which includes special sensory symptoms like visual or hearing disturbances, abnormal movement such as tremors, dystonic movement, myoclonus or gait abnormalities, and others include swallowing symptoms including globus, which is a sensation of fullness in the neck, speech symptoms, for example aphonia or dysphonia, and slurred speech. There can also be attacks or seizures, usually lasting longer than classic seizures and commonly featuring the eyes being closed tightly. Alongside these symptoms, FND can often be accompanied by cognitive changes including forgetting conversations or how to perform tasks, or using incorrect words. There can also be fatigue and other systemic functional symptoms, like irritable bowel syndrome, overactive bladder, and chronic pain. It's important to recognise that functional does not mean voluntary or feigned. The exact cause and mechanism is not fully understood. Previously, it was thought that the physical symptoms may be manifestations of psychological distress, though now it is recognised that psychological distress is an important risk factor and may perpetuate symptoms, but it isn't always identifiable. Other risk factors include a history of childhood illness, a family history of chronic illness, a history of trauma, including sexual abuse, thought to be present in between 50 and 75% of cases. Others include being female, as 75% of cases occur in females, health anxiety, and concurrent psychiatric or neurological conditions, like depression, anxiety, or Parkinson's disease. Overall, it's a relatively common condition, with a prevalence of 50 per 100,000 of the US population. Its onset can be at any age, though it is most common in early to middle adulthood. FND can vary in its presentation, ranging from acute presentations to emergency services to routine primary care appointments, but usually requires a specialist opinion to diagnose. It's important to assess physical and neurologically, thoroughly, and to consider a broad differential, including FND in the differential rather than only after all other conditions have been excluded. During history taking, elements of how the patient reports the history may present clues to the diagnosis, such as alexithymia, where there is difficulty identifying and describing feelings, and neuroticism, where there is a lifelong tendency to experience negative effect and distress. Other clues include distribution of symptoms being not in keeping with any particular nerve or anatomical distribution, for example, splitting the midline. Hoover's sign is another, where a seemingly paralysed leg will exert downwards pressure on the examiner's hand as the other leg is raised against resistance. Others include give way weakness, where there is full power initially, followed by a sudden drop off in power. Distractibility, for example a tremor that changes or disappears when asked to copy a rhythmic movement with the other hand. There's often inconsistent severity, for example being able to walk in but having severe leg weakness on examination. Vision disturbance in a tunnel distribution rather than a cone is another example. To meet the DSM-5 criteria, the patient must have one or more symptoms of altered voluntary motor or sensory function, clinical findings providing evidence of incompatibility between the symptom and recognised neurological or medical conditions, 
the symptom or deficit is not better explained by another medical or mental disorder, and the symptom or deficit causes clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning, or warrants medical evaluation. The treatment involves a patient-centred approach, taking care to acknowledge the reality of the patient's symptoms and the associated impact. The aim is typically an improved quality of life, and complete resolution of symptoms is actually possible. Patient education is paramount in importance, that should ideally be delivered by a neurologist when diagnosed, and helps validate the patient's symptoms. Online information should also be offered, which I'll leave links to in the description. In some cases, education can be enough. However, commonly, there are remaining deficits that benefit from rehabilitation. For example, physiotherapy in motor deficits, speech and language therapy if speech or swallowing is impaired, and occupational therapy may be of use in improving general everyday functioning. Usually, these are delivered alongside psychological intervention, commonly cognitive behavioural therapy. Further psychological therapy is the next step up, which can include psychodynamic psychotherapy, family therapy, dialectical behavioural therapy, and even hypnosis. In those that have ongoing problem symptoms despite steps 1 through 3, or a high level of disability, then specialised multidisciplinary team therapy can be delivered. For those with comorbid anxiety or depression, the management is similar to the above steps, however pharmacological therapy is added, such as a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, or a serotonin and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor.